since 2011, overdose has become the leading cause of accidental death in the U.S., exceeding deaths from motor vehicle accidents. Opioids have been the big driver of this increase in overdose deaths. The misuse of and addiction to opioids, including prescription pain relievers, heroin, and synthetic opioids such as fentanyl, is a serious national crisis. If you arrive to a scene where someone has taken prescription opioids like hydrocodone or oxycontin or illegal opioids like heroin, then you should know about the risks of an accidental life-threatening opioid overdose, how to recognize the signs, and how to properly administer naloxone nasal spray. Opioids are medicines for pain. Vicodin, codeine, oxycontin, Percocet, Opana, methadone, and fentanyl. Heroin is also an opioid. Anyone who uses these drugs or medications can overdose. An opioid overdose can cause long-term brain, nerve, or physical damage, and even death because you could stop breathing. Opioid overdose signs may or may not be noticeable right after a person uses and can take up to three hours after use. If you are worried someone is having an opioid overdose, this is what to look for. Are they not breathing or breathing very slowly? Throwing up? Making choking, gurgling, or snoring noises? Limp and unresponsive? Have slow or no pulse? Pale with blue tinged lips or fingertips? It is important to note that individuals may not have all of the signs. So if they exhibit any of these signs and they took pills, drugs, or medication, they are likely overdosing and need help. How's his respirations? They're low. About six or so. Would you agree? Yeah. Certain factors increase the risk of overdose. Mixing drugs. Using any opioid such as heroin, opium, methadone with alcohol. Benzodiazepines or other sedatives increases the risk for overdose. Most overdoses involve multiple substances, not just opioids unfamiliar suppliers, or changes in quality. When a drug user has a new dealer, or their dealer gets a new supply, it may be of a different strength than what their body is used to. It may also be cut or mixed with other drugs. Having someone else inject them. When a drug user relies on someone else to inject them, they lose control over their dose. This is often a problem for women who may have their partners inject them. Taking more than used to. If an opioid user has been opioid-free for even a few days and then takes drugs or pain medicine, they are more likely to overdose. The number one time people overdose is just after a drug-free treatment episode or release from incarceration. Using alone. Use with a partner educated on responding to an overdose is safer than using alone. An alternative is for the user to notify a close contact of planned use. If you suspect a patient is overdosing on opioids, here's how to properly respond. Naloxone nasal spray, commonly known as Narcan, is a prescription medicine that reverses the effects of an opioid overdose. Naloxone is not addictive. Naloxone only works if there are opioids involved. It does not work on other non-opioid-based drugs. Use of naloxone does not encourage overdose. It also does not harm someone if given when a patient has no opioids in their system. Naloxone is not a substitute for additional emergency medical care. After administering naloxone, it is important to transport the patient to a hospital emergency center. Naloxone may have been given by a bystander or law enforcement prior to your arrival. If so, make sure it is documented and conveyed to the hospital. Don't let what you think the patient has used, based on bystander report or what you see at the scene, be the sole factor for deciding how to respond to a possible overdose. Low respiratory rate, less than 8 breaths per minute, is the most reliable objective finding in deciding when to use naloxone. Given that many overdose patients have used multiple substances which can dilate or constrict pupils, Pupil size is not a reliable sign. Even with multiple drugs in their system, many overdose patients who have opioids on board will respond to naloxone enough to resume breathing at a rate that protects their organs from long-term damage and saves their life. To administer naloxone, 1. P 
peel back the package to remove the device. Two, place the tip of the nozzle in either nostril until your fingers touch the bottom of the patient's nose. Three, press the plunger firmly to release the dose into the patient's nose. Four, a single dose of naloxone may not always reverse opioid overdose. A second dose may be given in two to three minutes following the first dose in the other nostril if you have another dose available. Hey, bud. Hey, just relax. I'm with the fire department, man. Just relax. You took a little bit too much Encourage the patient to go to the hospital. Sometimes people are afraid to go for fear of getting in trouble. Did you talk to the patient about going to the hospital? Not this guy. I've seen him before. He knows the process. If you don't want to go to the hospital, that's on him. We need to talk to him. It's important that we make sure that every patient has all the information necessary in order to best manage their health. Even if we think he knows, we need to be prepared to have a conversation about the risks of refusing care in every situation like this. You never know when someone's going to decide to make a different decision. A systematic review found implicit bias among healthcare professionals, regardless of level of training. The researchers also found a significant relationship between implicit bias and patient-provider interactions, treatment decisions, treatment adherence, and patient health outcomes. There are several actions that you can take to reduce implicit bias. Here are a few. Acknowledge that implicit bias occurs and understand the extent of the problem. Individuation. See the person as an individual rather than a stereotype. Have a basic understanding of the cultures your patients come from. Know the national, culturally, and linguistically appropriate services, CLAS, standards. And promote procedural change at the organizational level that moves towards a socially accountable healthcare system with the goal of health equity. But if you don't encourage the person to go, they could potentially overdose again and die after the naloxone wears off in 30 to 80 minutes, or if they use again before their current opioid fully wears off, which can be as long as eight to 12 hours. At that point, the naloxone's gonna wear off and your opiates are gonna kick back in. The respiratory drive's gonna go down, you're gonna become unconscious. You'll be right out here, right back out here. If you let us take you to the hospital, they can monitor these values over the next couple hours and make sure that you don't die and that you don't go into respiratory depression or unconsciousness. It's all right with you. I'd really feel more comfortable taking you to the hospital. Okay. All right. Fantastic. All right. If know, they yeah. still refuse to go, encourage them to contact a local treatment center and ask for a friend or family bystander, if present, to stay with the person for the next 8 to 12 hours. Now you have been trained on how to properly respond to an opioid overdose using naloxone nasal spray. This training could mean the difference in you playing a life-saving role and potentially preventing an opioid overdose death. If you have naloxone and know how to use it, you can save a life.